Hello everyone, welcome back to another UMI tutorial. My name is Ellen Reinhardt and today I'm going to tell you more about the UMI user interface. In order to start the entire process, I suggest you open up either a new Rhino file or you open up your existing UMI file that you worked on with the last tutorial. The UMI file that I'm going to use for today's tutorial already has an existing neighborhood in place. You can see the buildings in 3D. There are also existing streets, parks, property lines, and I already adjusted them according to the layers that are prescribed by UMI. Please make sure that the parks that you include are modeled as surfaces and the streets as polylines. The site boundary consists of one or more closed polylines and the total area of that serves as the reference area under site analysis. Secondly, it is also useful to create sublayers that differentiate between the building templates assigned to them. Later on, this will be very helpful to keep an overview. You can see that UMI allows you to add even more information aside the 3D buildings, so feel free to add that to these existing layers. Just to reiterate, you can either set up your site manually, as we are doing here, or you can choose an existing neighborhood or city that you want to investigate. And the tool called upem.io allows you to generate an UMI file for an existing neighborhood or city. When moving back to the UMI icon at the top, you can see that it has three tabs called Project, Building and Modules. The project level, you select the weather file and the template library that you want to have for the neighborhood you're investigating in. On the building level, you will then assign all of the individual buildings to one of those templates. And the last one, which are all of the modules, they're divided into seven modules as of now into one that is called the site, the daylighting module, energy, but also a district energy module, a life cycle module, a harvest model, and lastly, also one module on mobility. Going back to the project level, you can now go ahead and select the weather file of the site you're investigating in. I'm going to select the default, which is the Boston Logan Airport weather file. And because of that, I'm also going to stick to the same template library. Also for Boston, you can either load another template library into it. You can edit the existing one, or you can actually also export a template library if you want to use it for another UMI file. By clicking on the edit button, you will now have access to the template library editor, which allows you to have an overview of the materials, the constructions, schedules, zone information, and also the building templates that are part of the template library that you selected. Speaking of template libraries, a template library essentially contains all of the building descriptions, including material properties, thermal properties, all of the valuable information that is required for you to then run the simulation afterwards. In this template library, which is specifically for Boston, you can see the options between either selecting office spaces, residential spaces, or even retail. And in residential, you have the option between selecting either masonry or wood frame as the material of the building. Before you assign any of the templates to the actual buildings, please make sure that all of the 3D buildings are closed B-rep shapes. What is also great is when you specify B-reps as buildings, they will automatically be copied onto the building's layer. You can now go ahead and assign building templates to the 3D buildings on site. One tip is to select all of the buildings that have the same function in one go. You can rename the buildings according to the usage and also assign the building template. And this will allow you to go through this entire process more efficiently in case you have a very large neighborhood that you're investigating. In this first example, I'm looking at office spaces and the building template that I select for this is the Boston office one. The energy simulator that is going to be used is the UMI shoeboxer, which is the default setting. By allocating the building template to the buildings, you now have access to the floor area, but also an approximation of occupants in those spaces. And what you now can do is also adjust the window to wall ratio according to the facade orientation. 
After completing this procedure, you can now repeat the same process for all of the other buildings in the neighborhood that you're investigating. It is advised for you to add the site boundary to your file in order to get more specified info on the gross floor area, the site ground area, and the floor area ratio. If you want to have the actual floor area ratio, you should only draw the parcels excluding the streets. After assigning building templates to all of the buildings in our file, we are now ready to run all of the simulations. This process will be shown in the next tutorial. Thank you for sticking around and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.